The movement we've witnessed in Bangladesh over the past month is being called the first revolution led by Gen Z. We've seen a mass uprising by students of Bangladesh who are angry over an unfair job system but has transformed into something that is about justice and fighting corruption in Bangladesh. After weeks of protests, more than 300 people have been killed. <laughs> So the students in Bangladesh came out to protest because of a system which allocates government jobs based on certain quotas and a large proportion of that went to the families of freedom fighters. So the freedom fighters are people who fought against Pakistan for independence in 1971. Now in Bangladesh for students who worked really quite hard to get their degrees and hopefully build a career, it felt really unfair. The government has tried to contain it at every stage by arresting the student leaders, attacking them, by killing them. The images have got out there and they've governed the population. When the Supreme Court overturned the quota, the protests could have stopped there. But people kept going because they wanted justice for those who'd been killed in the first few weeks. Over time, there was like a kind of greater mobilization to the point that a month after the protest started, people were storming the residence of the Prime Minister who had escaped in a helicopter. Sheikh Hasina was the longest serving female Prime Minister in the world. She'd been in power since 2009 and had also been Prime Minister in the 90s. But Sheikh Hasina's rule over the last 15 years in particular has been associated with corruption and repression. Not long after Sheikh Hasina left, thousands of anti-government protesters stormed her official residence. They ran all through the grounds, through the house. The whole place was overrun. It was just like an outpouring of emotion. And I think for a lot of people, it was kind of like, while they've struggled, you saw all of this wealth on show and kind of really surreal pictures. Like there was a video of people just eating the food that had been left in the kitchen. People sent me videos from where, from where they were. Everyone was kind of in the street partying, jumping up on wherever they could to hang Bangladeshi flags. There were all these chants of freedom. They've nominated Mohammed Yunus to be the head of the interim government. So Mohammed Yunus is a really quite well-loved figure in Bangladesh and respected on the international stage. He's a Nobel Peace Prize winner. He's not associated to any of the political parties. People hope that he will be the first step in a break from the old political system.